Hello YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am talking about dragons. So I have said on this channel several times in the past that if you add a dragon to literally anything, it makes it better. And I mean that with all of my heart. <laughs> Seriously, just think about it. Like, you can try to stump me by saying something random, like, oh yeah, what about Pride and Prejudice? Okay, hear me out. What if Mr. Darcy is so crabby because he's secretly a dragon that was cursed in a human form, and then, like, only love can restore his dragonness, and then Lizzie comes there, and they're not getting along, but that this is his one shot. Like, tell me that's not a better story, because it is. <laughs> Or, uh, hey, Wuthering Heights, add a dragon. Here's what happens. Heathcliff, he leaves Kathy to go earn his fortune by becoming a dragon hunter. Like, tell me that wouldn't be better. Because, I'm sorry, Wuthering Heights, not my jam. But if you threw dragons in it, I probably would have liked it. So that being said, any story plus dragon equals gold. Love it intensely. So I thought today in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite book dragons. I've read many a book with a dragon in it. I have a few books in this little like recommendation video that are also just on my TBR. And side note everybody, this video is actually sponsored by Penguin Teen. I partnered with Penguin Teen for today's video to talk about Flamefall by Rosaria Munda. This is the sequel to Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. Now, Fireborn, underrated hit. Like, I genuinely really, really like the book, and I will get into the plot of it shortly, but the sequel, Flamefall, is coming out on 323, and they so nicely sent me a copy of it, and I was like, yes, give me that book. I want it now. <laughs> so they're very kind. They sent me another copy of Fireborn and another copy of Flamefall. So I am pumped. Let's get into dragons. Let's go. So Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. It came out in 2019, and it flew completely under the radar. And I picked it up randomly, and I was like, okay, like, let's see what this is about. Like, I mean, dragons are on the cover, so I knew there was going to be dragons already. I was intrigued. And while this is a story about people who ride dragons and, you know, battles and dragon fights and all that kind of good stuff, it's actually more of a moody book about feelings. So I feel like if you go in just expecting dragon action, you might be confused. But if you go in expecting moody book about feelings, it also has dragon battles. You will be so impressed. Like, honestly, some of the writing in this book chef's kiss like it was gorgeously written so mainly we are following annie and lee these are childhood friends they grew up in an orphanage together but from very different upbringings annie um you know she was from a a poor peasant family who uh was all murdered by dragon fire because in this land uh pre-revolution there were all these dragon lords and they were like dragon dynasties where they would all have like be dragon riders throughout the dynasty and some of them were very evil and like burnt people with their dragons like dude not cool and then you have lee also orphaned in the revolution except lee his family were the dragon dynasty people actually lee's dad the one who killed Annie's family. So, uh, awkward, but they're still best friends because they kind of grew up in this orphanage together. They're all each other has. And, you know, they kind of come from very different backgrounds. And so there's a lot of, like, conflicted moodiness in their backgrounds and their relationship with each other because they desperately, like, love each other in not necessarily a romantic way and not necessarily in a family way. It's more of just, like soulmatey, I guess, I, without trying to be, you know, metaphysical. It's just like, they've grown up together and they're kind of all each other has in the world. Like, this is the one person you trust over anybody, but like the political machinations of the world that you live in are like rough. They've lived in this new world where like the dragon lords, their dynasties have been toppled. It's more of now a democracy. And there starts to be rumors of like, hey, maybe not all those dragon lords died in the big execution. Uh-oh, dun dun dun. They're trying to come back, they're trying to reclaim the country, and Lee's kind of in the middle of it. He's like, I don't know what side I'm gonna choose. On the one hand, everything I believe is the country I'm in now where it's equal, no one is like murdering each other with dragon fire. He believes in this system. And then the other side, 
the only remaining blood relatives he has, like, he's going to have to kill them in a war, so he's kind of conflicted here. And it's also just him and Annie, and, like, their, their relationship is so convoluted. But, like, that's the juiciness of the book, is that things are messy. It's not just one thing. Like, their emotions are just a big tangled mess of, oh my goodness. There's dragon battles, there's political machinations, but really, moody book about feelings, and mm, chef's kiss, some of the writing here is just gorgeous. I highly recommend. Try it out. It's underrated. And now the sequels finally come out on the 23rd, so just this coming Tuesday, right around the corner, Flamefall comes out. Ah! Ooh! The ending, ooh, the ending of Fireboard, like, I have been waiting two years now, two years to get, like, what's gonna happen next? Some shit went down in that one. So, like, just the, the back of the book here, it's two sentences. The second revolution is coming. Which side are you on? Dun dun dun. So, without getting into spoilers, oh man, there are some betrayals and craziness that happened at the end of Fireborn. Lee is in a very precarious situation and so is Annie. Like I was mentioning earlier, this new regime that like toppled the Dragon Lords isn't perfect either. It has its own problems. You know, there is something rotten in the state of Denmark, so to speak. And then you have the old Dragon Lords trying to come back with their regime equally as rotten. So they all have to figure out, we need to do something. You got to pick a side or you got to forge a new one, essentially. And it's going to be dragon battles. There's going to be moody feelings. I am so excited. I'm, I'm, oh my, I'm just going to read it now. <laughs> like, part of me was like, oh, I can wait a little bit. And I'm like, nope. I think when I'm done with the video, I'm probably just gonna start reading it because like I need it in my life. It's so good. Ah! So yes, March 23rd, get yourself a copy and get a copy of Fireborn. Seriously, underrated. It's so good, try it out. Since Penguin Team was sponsoring this video, they also sent me this series, which I haven't read yet, but I had heard of and thought it was interesting. I have Rebel Ring by Andrea Tang, and I have Renegade Flight by Andrea Tang. This is book one and two of this series. And like, I remember seeing this a couple years ago and being like, that looks fascinating. I'm into it. It's like dragons and school kids. And I was like, yes, tell me more. <laughs> the blurb on this one, gorgeous. I'm just gonna read it because frankly, I can't synopsize it better, it's great. <laughs> Things just got weird for Prudence Wu. One minute, she's cashing in on a routine smuggling deal. The next, she's escaping enforcers on the wings of what very much appears to be a sentient cybernetic dragon. Pru is used to life throwing her some unpleasant surprises. She goes to prep school after all and selling banned media across the border in a country with a ruthless corporate government obviously has its risks. But a cybernetic dragon, that's new. She tries to forget the fact that the only reason she's not in jail is because some sort of robot saved her and that she's going to have to get a new side job now that enforcers are onto her. So she's not exactly thrilled when Rebel Wing shows up again. Even worse, it's become increasingly clear that the rogue machine has imprinted on her permanently, which means she'd better figure out this whole piloting a dragon thing fast because Rebel Wing just happens to be the ridiculously expensive weapon her government needs in a brewing war with his neighbor and proves the only one who can fly it. Like, seriously, I felt like I wrote this blurb. Like, this is exactly how I talk when I am synopsizing things and I'm just like, I, what? Did I write this? <laughs> like, this is exactly what I would have written if I was writing a blurb. It sounds so cool and like snarky and sarcastic and like random dr random metal dragon and like what oh it, it, I, I like that it has like a fairly humorous tone to it and I've seen this book around I hadn't got a chance to read it yet so like I am way more excited to read this than I've ever been before now like I love the blurb I'm obsessed and they so kindly sent me the sequel book which is Renegade Flight and this actually takes place 15 years after Rebel Wing so this is like Penguin Teen release but like it's 15 years later, like this ain't a teenager anymore. Like there's no way. So this is probably someone in their early 30s. Also, you know, still kind of a rascal, kind of getting into trouble, trying to pilot a dragon. Like what's a girl gonna do? So this is kind of a standalone sequel 15 years later. Yes, I am so freaking into this right now. Like I can't stand it. Oh my word, how have I not read this already? Like I'm freaking out about it. <laughs> 
again, thank you Penguin Teen for sponsoring this video and sending me a bunch of really cool books. I am super pumped about them. But without further ado, let's get into some other dragon books that I'm totally into. Let's start things off right with uh, Abraxos from the Throne of Glass series. He makes his first appearance in Air of Fire. I love Abraxos. He is, um, I don't know, like a bait dragon, essentially, you know, kind of like, like how they do for dog fighting. They have a bait dog and that's Abraxos. Like people pick, like all the other dragons pick on this guy and then Menon and him like have a connection and she's like, you're scrappy and I bet you want to kill some motherfuckers. And he's like, yeah. And so they team up and then they kill some motherfuckers. <laughs> Abraxas is the best, you know, he's been through some shit. He's very like kind of weary, battle hard, snarky, but also likes to sniff flowers. Like I love Abraxos so much. He's great, love him to bits. Little fighter, love him. And um, yeah, first appearance in Era of Fire and then throughout the rest of the series, love Abraxos. Although technically a wyvern, but I'm counting it as a dragon. They're technically still dragons. And I'm not going to go full nerd on everybody right now, but whatever. It, it's a dragon for all intents and purposes. I also have the Chorus of Dragons series. This is book one, The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. There are like seven or eight dragons in this series. Lots and lots of dragons and each of them have like a really intense personality. Like in this book they have this like, they call him the old man. He's a huge like island sized black dragon and he loves music and people singing songs but he's also evil. Like he loves music so much he will keep you forever so you can only sing to him. Like you know like crazy dragon stuff. And they also have ice dragons and like metal dragons and like just dragons everywhere and shapeshifter dragons. There's so many dragons. <laughs> and I've talked about this series several times, but like if you are a fantasy nerd, you love world building, you love magic systems, hot damn will you love this series. It is so intricate and complex and there's dragons like a lot of them. So it's definitely really fun. If you are a world building geek, you're going to love it. Highly recommend. I also have to bring up the Temeraire series by Naomi Novik. Book one is His Majesty's Dragon. This is kind of a historical reimagining of the Napoleonic Wars, except now there's dragons. So already obsessed with that concept. And we're really following this guy named Will. He's a captain of a boat and then they find a dragon egg and the dragon hatches and kind of imprints on Will. So he's like, oh, well shit, I'm stuck with this dragon now. And he names the dragon Temeraire. And the dragons in this series are really cool because they all have their own intelligence. They all speak. They can speak to people. Like they just speak with their mouths. Like there's not like a weird like telepathic thing. They could just talk to people. Some of them are scholars. Some of them are like warriors. And then Will and Temeraire have this like great partnership it's almost like family. I was think more maybe like father and son relationship. And it's just really cute because like Will has to describe the world to Temeraire as if he's like a kid saying, hey, what are whores? And he's just like, oh, pff, well, um, when two people love each other, <laughs> like, he's just very much being awkward dad trying to teach his kid about the birds and the bees, except this kid is a dragon. So the birds and the bees are, don't really make sense because there's eggs. I don't know. Whatever. It's very much a father-son relationship and I love it. It's very fun. The dragons can talk. Some of them are professors and like dragons are basically just like another sentient race of people in this world. They're not like lesser than. They're not like property of. They're kind of like partners with other humans. So it's a really cool world. Napoleonic Wars meets dragons. Love. And of course, what kind of video about dragons wouldn't have mentioned Smaug from The Hobbit? And yes, love it. This is like very typical historical fantasy dragon where he just hoards up his gold and he's crotchety and then he burns people because he's a dragon and he's just like, I want to nap and have my gold. Like he's just like a crotchety old man. <laughs> he's kind of like Scrooge McDuck, but a dragon. <laughs> I feel like for fellow 90s children, like that reference was dope. I'm proud of myself for making it. Scrooge McDuck, but a dragon. Just wants to like nap and be in piles of gold. Love him. <laughs> He's just like classic dragon, you know what I mean? 
On my TBR list, I have Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. This is book three of the Farseer trilogy. And the thing is, the Farseer trilogy already had like assassins and wizards and like mind melding stuff going on. And then I found out, like I've only just heard, book three has dragons. What? Why did no one tell me there's dragons in it? Like, I'm beside myself. <laughs> Like, I haven't read book two yet, so I don't know how dragons come into the picture, but there's a dragon on the cover. And then I checked with my friend. I'm like, hey, are there dragons in the Farseer trilogy? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, what? I need it. So, um, yes, this is on my TBR list. There's freaking dragons. I'm already into the series, and now there's dragons. Take a story, add dragons. It's better. Another book on my TBR list is House of Dragons by Jessica Kloos. Oh, I love Jessica Kloos as a human and as an author. This is her most recent series, um, House of Dragons. It's kind of like The Breakfast Club meets dragons. So like The Breakfast Club, they have five kids in this book. Each one is very much filling an archetype of a character and they all have to compete for the throne and they all ride dragons and they battle with dragons and they're competing for the throne. So it's a breakfast club meets dragon battles. Like, tell me no more and I already want to read it. I just hadn't read it yet. And it's like a stupid reason. It's because I really wanted the audiobook because Fiona Hardingham usually does them and I freaking love Fiona Hardingham and the audiobook is finally coming out like just in time for book two to release. So I'm just going to marathon them. I'm like, I'm really excited for it right now. I'm going to marathon dragon books. Yes. And they're just to get close. Yes. <laughs> If you haven't read Jessica Clues, she wrote a previous trilogy, the Kingdom on Fire series. Book one of that is A Shadow Bright and Burning, and that is basically a reimagining of Victorian England, except in this Victorian England, there are interdimensional monsters roaming the English countrysides, and it's up to wizards to defend the empire. Like, if that doesn't sound awesome to you, I don't know how you live your life, but they're great, and I recommend the series, it's really good. So this last little section of the video is a section I am calling Dragons Need Love Too. Because in the world of paranormal romance, there are many a dragon in a shapeshiftery type of situation and smutty delight. So let's go into a few of those. First up, I have The Rogue King by Abigail Owen. This is Dragon Shifters and we're following Kasia and she is a young woman. She is always being hunted by dragon shifters in this world. They're always after her because she's a phoenix and she just can't stop bursting into flames. So there, she's like catnip for them. <laughs> and then you have Brand. He's kind of a rogue dragon, like out for revenge. And then he meets Kasia and he's like, oh, you a phoenix? Like, I'm gonna take you to the king. And then he's gonna give me stuff and I get revenge because I want that. And then like, oh no, they fall in love. <laughs> So, I mean, it's very typical uh, paranormal romance dragon book. And like, if you like dragons and you like smutty delights, I recommend. But it's like, you know, fun to read. It's not really like too deep, but it is a good like page turner. It's like a popcorn book. You're just like, oh, gasp, what are they gonna do next? <laughs> Another great paranormal dragon story is Dragon Actually by G.A. Aiken. You know, it's kind of like love actually. And like, oh, the blurb on this, dope. <laughs> So we have our heroine, Anwell the Bloody. Um, she's kind of having a rough time meeting guys when that's her nickname, Anwell the Bloody. And you know, she's, she's really good at decapitating people. So it's hard to meet a guy who's not like really off put by that. And then she meets Fergus the Destroyer. He's a dragon shapeshifter. She really likes him. He's also like training her for like new battle techniques. And she's like, okay, cool. Like you're super hot. And then you're also a dragon sometimes. So that's cool. And like, she's into it. And like, I mean, the whole situation's very weird. So she hangs out with this guy who's also a dragon, but then sometimes a dude. So like things are weird in their relationship and also her family's crazy. So it's kind of like, it's more of a comedy based, like fantasy romance with dragons. So I, I'm really excited. Like, I'll be honest, I haven't finished reading this, but like I've read some of it and like pretty good. So like I'm impressed. I want to, I actually want to get back into this one. The last dragon loving book in this video is The Unbearable Lightness of Dragons by Katie McAllister. I just love the title. It's adorable. It sounds like, you know, the importance of being earnest, but with dragons. <laughs> I don't think this is the first book of the series. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure this is like a, like, continual series and we're following this woman Azold 
and she has a lot on her plate. Like she's gotta work out a peace between the dragons and the wares. She's gotta convince this archmage to get rid of the spell on her that's like messing up her dragon side. She's gotta rescue this half dragon damsel who's just like way over her head. And also she's gotta get all the murder charges against her like mate slash fiance Baltic dropped because apparently that's a problem. So she's got a lot of things to do while also being a dragon. She's got a lot on her plate. So yes, this one also seems like urban fantasy. You know, like that snarky, sarcastic Kate Daniels-esque, like urban fantasy. But I don't think it's urban fantasy. I think this is maybe a fantasy world. But um, yes, I haven't read this one, but it's been on my shelf and I just always love the title. I need to read it already. It's, it looks so fun. Oh, maybe it is urban fantasy because that's like, that's not a fantasy dress. That's a normal dress. Ooh, I'm so excited to read this. <laughs> Okay, so those are just a few dragon books. I mean, there are hundreds of dragon books out there. I haven't read every dragon book in the world, but honestly, I just add dragons to stories I'm reading and it makes it better, always. Let me know in the comments down below, uh, what's another dragon book I didn't mention in this video? Like I know I didn't mention Game of Thrones, I know, but I actually haven't read the books, so I, I don't own the books either because like I just like the show. I've tried reading the books. I couldn't do it. I just don't like his writing style. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, Obviously Game of Thrones wasn't on the list, but that's one of them. And if you know of any more dragon books that were on this list, put them in the comments down below. Let's all share some more dragon stories. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon.